This week on Bean Stuff. Why do I need to fill the battery up? What actually makes this car tick? Huh, I like number two better than number one. Edward Fukunanga. The principal objective in processing coffee, and that's what we're talking about, processing yeah. coffee, at the grower level, the farmer, is the dehydration, get that, is the dehydration of the coffee bean to a point where all biological actions cease. Welcome to Bean Stuff. Today we are diving into a, another episode on processing. This time a different process, right Dan? We're going to look at the wet or washed process today. Why would I care about this? This sounds like a boring mm. episode. The bottom line, it changes the taste that you're drinking in the morning of coffee. You know, you could have the same coffee, you could have a Kenyan coffee mm -hmm. going from dry to wet processing could have a large shift in flavor there's a whole lot of different ways it could be done and that means that the farmer now can say wow i sold so much more of that washed one than i ever have with the dried they seem to like that in the states right. or new zealand wherever they were and i'm going to make some more washed coffee this year uh, it's like being a car enthusiast. Mm -hmm. If you enjoy driving a Porsche, you may not understand how the Porsche actually works or how it runs or mm -hmm. what what makes it purr. Mm -hmm. But as you get more into cars, as you get more into the driving aspect, starting to understand what what actually makes this car tick, what, mm -hmm. what makes it move, what what creates the feeling that I really enjoy with this car. And as you say, with a Porsche, that's, uh, you've paid a lot of money to start with, and you can just take it off the lot, you're driving it off, and you're enjoying it, and you right. are enjoying it. But if you start thinking some questions, and these typical car questions like, why do I need to fill the battery up? What do you fill your battery up with? Uh, we used to <laughs> fill our battery ups with uh, distilled water. Funny enough, our forklift at our roastery, um, mm. we have to every week fill it up with distilled water. And mm. if you if you know the different aspect of the car, mm. you can say, huh, if I turn this button to the one rather than right. the two, huh, I like number two better than number one. But if you hadn't thought about that, just drive it off a lot and you're just driving everywhere and right. never gone to number two, I had no idea this would be so much more pleasurable. Being able to understand some of the nuances that create those differences can help you define better why it is that you like this coffee better than this coffee. And that can actually uh, help you to navigate yourself towards better coffees oh, exactly. con consistently. It's that natural process, no pun intended, <laughs> um, of, of understanding it deeper. You know, if you were to break coffee into four parts, or the, you know, from, 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 you know, seed to cup, what that looks like. It would be, you know, your first first out of four would be picking the cherry. Mm -hmm. The second would be the process, what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. uh, third would be roasting, and mm -hmm. then fourth would be brewing. Mm -hmm. um, so without this step, you don't get brewed coffee. Yeah, I was thinking about the other day, like you have a your full cup of coffee and you're all excited. Right. Where did that full cup of coffee come? Because it's. I looked at it as, it was, as I was thinking about this process, is the first quarter that you pour into the cup is, as you say, the coffee being picked, the cherry mm -hmm. being picked. You've got a quarter cup, oh, that's not enough. Then you get, uh, you do the process, and now you've got a half cup of coffee, oh, that, that's better. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you, get a, you roast it, you've got a three quarters, then you've got the full when you brew it. But mm. if you didn't have, for instance, that first, that half part of the processing, you're going to have a yucky cup of coffee. And you had an awesome quote from, you had a quote from 1957. I was looking on the internet and I, I was looking mm. at processed coffee and I, I went to one of the sites that it told me to go to and I couldn't yeah. believe it, but it was sort of, I could tell it was really old fashioned English, English and it, it was from 1957, some guy called Edward Fukunanga. Mm. But he said, and bear with me, but it says the principal objective in processing coffee, and that's what we're talking about, processing yeah. coffee, at the grower level, the farmer, is the dehydration, get that, is the dehydration of the coffee bean to a point where all biological actions cease. In other words, the process, you're trying to stop the coffee from going further. Mm. You've got to the best point where it's going to taste best in the cup. You say, stop. How do I stop it? And the process is part of that whole whole thing of, of ceasing it from going further and tasting over-fermented or just yeah. bad. The wet process of, of, of coffee is mm. to do more with what we're doing outward to the right. bean. to get How we're processing. And how we're getting that pulp and all that fruit off the, off the coffee bean to stop it working. 
Well, and just to, to recap, so there's the natural pro- – there's a lot. We're not going to name all of them. But no. there's the natural process, which is basically you remove nothing from the bean mm-hmm. and, 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 and just dry the bean as it's picked from the that's tree. That's right. That's right. And then you've got honey. And how is honey different? Well, that's in between. You take the pulp. You take the skin off. Mm. Mucilage is still there on, on the coffee. And you put that part onto the drying patio or the raised beds, whatever it may be. Mm. Um, so some of the fruit is still on the bean. Right. Where um, wash coffee, you're removing all that fruit. You're stopping so you remove it completely. The skin of the fruit, the the mucilage of the fruit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and if you're not 100 percent sure, like if you don't know what mucilage is, mm-hmm. the way I think about it is if you were to peel an apricot, like if you were to just take the 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 skin of the skin apricot off, yeah. off the, the the meat of the fruit that's around the pit mm-hmm. is kind of. I mean, it's not going to be exact, but no. it's similar to what that mucilage mm-hmm. is. It's kind of this this casing that's inside the skin of the cherry mm-hmm. that encapsulates the bean. But we're taking all of that off. I think it's something that you should start looking at the coffee bags when yeah. you're purchasing them because you know we always look at what's the roast. Is it dark? Is it light? Mm-hmm. Is it? Hopefully, know. they're looking at is it robusta <laughs> or arabica. I think as we move further and further into third wave coffee it's mm-hmm. it's important to look at the the method of processing mm-hmm. was it washed was it you know dry or natural or all these different methods that are there because that is going to hugely affect the flavor you could buy accidentally a kenyan coffee that's not washed and that's rather a natural process and go wow this what? must be a bad batch or you know you just may not like mm-hmm. it but mm-hmm. it just might be that it's it's processed differently yep and some countries are just more uh, adapted or uh, one process is more readily available to them than another process. In Brazil, they do a lot of pulp natural mm. and the humidity, it's on the right on the um, equator there. It, the, the climate fits in with the harvest and makes sense that they do that. Mm-hmm. Kenya, I, there's both. I, I know of a lot of washed coffees from Kenya and uh, it's been done that, that way for years and it works really well. Why would you potentially like a washed coffee more than a natural coffee? Washed coffees often, as I say, you get the, what the seed actually tastes like. Mm. And it can be clean. It can have a little more acidity sometimes. And that's that's preferable in different drinks and different ways you, you want your coffee. Right. It just makes a, the, the cup, um, it can be a little more balanced. It's not so fruity that it's 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 sort of way out there. Right. It, you can have a more more balanced cup. You know, if a bag does indicate its, its process type or how it's been processed, it's not a marketing term or something. It's, well, I guess it could be, but... Um, they are going to be a difference in flavor. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a big difference. There will be. There will be. And I think you had told me that the the wash process is the most common process for coffee. I to believe go so. From my understanding, it, it's more done out there than any other methods. Even though the the natural is a simpler method and can be used in in many places because you don't need all the equipment as such. The focus of washed coffee is on the bean, the flavor of the bean, not the fruit around it or the infusion right. that, that which has. again points to you need to make sure as a farmer you're getting the right genetics going on there, right. how you're growing it, because once the mucilage off, you've all you've got is a seed that you've been working with the last few months now to bring out the best. And that's an interesting piece too, that, that when do you pick it? When do you do all these things? You know, it's important in any coffee, but it's especially important when you don't have any fruit or anything that's continuing any kind of fermentation or any mm-hmm. kind of ripening while it's picked and drying. You know, it's like you have to, when you pick it, you have to decide that's what the flavor needs to be. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, in one sense, the natural process, it can be very difficult on, right. because you're not seeing any of that. You're sort of going with, okay, that's the time. It's saying that's, it hasn't rained today, so I'm going to give it one more day or one less day. True. So you can, I, I would sense that you could probably go a little more wrong, if I can say that word, mm. with the natural process than the washed. Washed gives you a little more room to juggle and do a few things. Not not that it can't go horribly wrong, but you've got some more tools to use in your, your toolkit. The washed is kind of like a, a hard cliff face, whereas the the natural is more of a sloped hill. Yeah. Because you, yeah. after you pick it, there's still stuff going on that you can't control. That's right. And there's different, there's things that happen on the farm, on the mill that, that you can't control. Some of the essentials to a washed process coffee um, and some of these will be shared with with other processes as well exactly but uh, varietal it's going to have a huge impact on that yes yes um, the soil that's grown and I think we had talked a little bit about that in our in, in a previous episode yep. about how soil affects that mm-hmm um, the pH, acidity of soil, exactly. lots of things, lime or phosphorus, all sorts of things go into the soil. Hugely. 
the ripeness, obviously. So when you're picking that, and that's you know those those all of those are going to be effective for the dry or wet. Yeah, the old processes yep. will kind of involve Correct. that. Yeah. Um, but fermentation washing, or fermentation and washing, mm-hmm. and that's it's, unique to wet process. Yes. Once you start washing coffee, once you start stop the process, you've taken the 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 mucilage off the coffee. Mm. You're that you're into the you've washed it off as such, and and you're you're into the washing process at that point. And that fermentation piece is not to be confused with like the dry process when you're drying the whole bean with the cherry on it. There is a, a fermentation that could be occurring mm. in mm-hmm. that. But this is a fermentation once once this is in a fermentation tank. Mm-hmm. Different, very we'll you know, get to specific the tank, to wet process. That's right. There's there's enzymes, microorganisms that the water with the the mucilage of the bean, the, the remaining mucilage on that bean. Uh, causes the mucilage to 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 decrease. And would you say that the wash process highlights more of the country of origin than other processes hmm. might? Or, hmm. yeah, I guess when it brings out a flavor, is it a flavor that's more unique to that bean? My initial answer to that is yes, because you're dealing with the seed. But then you could go the other way and say, well, all that mucilage is part of mm. the whole cherry, and it's it's part of the country as well. We've talked a lot about the why and and what what that kind of process brings out, but let's start digging into the process mm-hmm. itself. Yes. So after the coffee is harvested, we've we've picked all the beans that we're going to use for the for this process. What's step number one? Step number one would be, I mean, the the the, the pickers come and bring the coffee to the station, mm-hmm. and they. Um, get weighed and get paid for their coffee, how much they've picked as such. That usually goes into a sorting, it's called a sorting tank of water. Mm. And the ripeness of the coffee is determined uh, at that point. And to tie back into one of our other episodes, we talked about the borer beetle. Ooh. And it's something you had mentioned to me, the the, the ripe coffee sinks, the mm. non-ripe coffee floats. And the borer beetle, obviously, it well, not obviously it digs into the bean and takes out caffeine, which is what it eats and that kind of stuff. But when you bore into the bean, there's more air pockets, so it's more likely to float than a bean that's ripe. True. It it, it damages one the flavor of the bean because it's right. taking some of all the part of the bean out of the bean and it's digesting it itself. Mm. And and there's different things out there, but uh, yeah, why a, a coffee floats first thing actually would be because if it's picked unripe it hasn't has many carbohydrates sugars things haven't happened Mm. and developed and which makes the coffee cherry a little heavier which then will sink whereas the unripe ones will float because they haven't progressed enough they haven't developed enough of that sugar and other things and it's interesting how simple the putting beans in water, the whole yeah, cherry in water. It's brilliant. The, the ripe ones sink, the unripe, unripe floats. And I think that something that, that, that I originally had a misconception about is that's not what makes it a wet process because you might use the same sorting method for right. a multitude of, of processes. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that is water, that's the beans in water, yes and yes, but it's not what makes it wet process. True. The wet process comes, uh, or, or I mean, the, these processes are all intertwined in lots of ways. Right. And the wet process is, as it says, is going to use, usually, typically, it's going to use water, or will use water. So, so with, with that wet process, there is there is some machinery involved. That's right. And that sounds that sounds expensive. It is. It is for farmers that can't afford lots of things to have suddenly depulpers and mucilages. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, in channels and concrete channels, typically farmers will take these to a wet mill. So somebody outside of the farmer has a dedicated yep. mill for it. And you get a number of farmers and you start getting into the words like a co-op of mm. different farmers who are cooperating with each other to come to the same wet mill where it's going to go through this process of uh, wet, the wet process. And the first one you mentioned, kind of, but the first part as coffee starts to be processed in the wet manner, Mm-hmm. Is depulping, depulping. Because as we had said, with wet process, you strip off every part of the bean that's, right. that's not the bean, <laughs> and this is not happening in any other methods as such. So, but, what is depulping? What, what, well, what I looked is up happening. The, I looked up in the dictionary this morning what D means. D E D E, and it means a way or denote, denoting removal or reversal. In other words, you are depulping. You are taking away the pulp, that skin layer on the the mm. first layer of the skin, kind of like delaminating when yeah. Yeah. It would be, yep. And you, that that goes from a sheen like a like a sieve. It squeezes through and it 
pops off that skin. So it's like a, like a like a mesh where the holes are just big mm-hmm. enough for the bean, kind of. Yeah, and it, I don't get it's, it's actually a machine that that like goes round and it's been forced through. It's not like a little sieve in the kitchen sort of thing. You're just pushing it down, <laughs> but uh, it's 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 a, it's a whole machinery that's doing this, which makes me think the farmer has gone from being an agronomist. Is that the right word? Agronomist, yeah. Agronomist, to um, knowing when to when to pick the the, the, the cherry, when to do that, mm. and now he's moving to a mechanic using a machine now that he needs to keep going. How does he get electricity to that machine? How do you keep the belts going? Right. The the maintenance of the machine, and uh, and he's moving into some of the the microbiologists shortly when he mm. gets to the fermentation tank. Once it's gone through that 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 filter essentially or, yes you know it's gotten Through most the of that off. there's still either some of the pulp is there but the the mucilage that that kind of mucus like layer that's mm-hmm. on the outside you know kind of like with the, the fruit we talked mm-hmm. about the meat or the fruit of mm-hmm. it um is still on there mm-hmm. um so what i guess what do we do to get that is that the next part in that process is taking that yes, mucilage off? Yes, and you there's different ways of doing it, and mm. you can go in different directions here, but you can get a, a I think they call it a demucifier, a mucilizer. Yeah. <laughs> Say that 10 times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where it's, it agitates pressure of water again is used, and then once it's it's done a, its best job it can, and some probably don't go through a mechanical separator like that, they just go mm. straight into a tank, and it looks like a vat, it looks like a concrete tank box yeah like a big well or a big, a big well i like that yes and place. it goes in there and it can sit in there for a little while and the the fermentation can start it's like wine really. now when you Grapes. say fermentation what does that mean i'm talking about the microbes and the enzymes are starting to eat into that uh, that fruit Mm. And it's it's a fermenting, it's changing. And, and those microbes or those pieces, those are in the water. There is moisture in the bean, mm. and they because you have stripped the, the the protective layer of the skin, the pulp's now off, right? And you have almost triggered these enzymes to to attack the mucilage as <laughs> such. That's probably not very scientific, but You're right. But uh, you have this this almost reaction happening. Yeah. And, and that's whether that tank's full of water or yeah. not. But typically they will put water in at some stage early on mm. and fill that up. And now you've got, uh, you've really started the whole process, the complete, the 100% process of let's get rid of all that mucilage. That's that's the aim here. Mm. And it's done in different ways. And some have this and some don't. But uh, you've put the water in now. And that's going to be the part that says, okay, do it. Yeah. There's nothing much to do as such. It's sitting in the in the the cherry is sitting in there. Except the farmer lays awake at night, possibly saying, "How long?" What's a range that the farmer might what let that coffee sit for? It, it depends on how much they've taken the mucilage off beforehand. So mm. I've heard six hours. That sounds really short. That sounds very quick. Typically, I've heard twenty four hours, and sometimes I've heard even seventy two. But and how how large are these tanks? Like how much coffee goes in? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure how much. I mean, it's about the size of this this room. So we're looking at f- about yeah. five foot by five foot tanks. And, a, and a, it could be about this, whatever that, eight foot. Eight foot high. Yeah, so foot. a pretty big tank. So oh, yeah. Full of coffee. Yeah. Well, full of water and coffee. They don't want right. too much. That's another part of the microbiologist coming out of the farmers. <laughs> What's the mixture of coffee yeah. and the ratio? If you have just all and you've got not enough water, then it's not going to affect the fermentation. There's also a machine assisted wet processing and that skips over the fermentant or fermentation tank, is that correct? Yeah, there's lots of stuff. Well, the mach- a lot of machines are trying to get rid of a lot of the water aspect of it's mm. not using so much water because once you use that water, where does it go? Does it go back into the stream? Right. Does it go back into the farm so it gets filtered in some well, way? And how do you get that water in some places to begin with? Exactly. Which is why a lot of countries use the dry process because they don't have access to the water. So what are these machines that are assisting in the water process? What are they doing? They, uh, they are basically, they are assisting, the, speeding up the process as such so that, that the, the mucilage is getting off mm. there more quickly. And uh, so they don't have to sit in these tanks of water so long or don't have to sit in a tank of water so, uh, as, as, a, as is. So they're, they're essentially doing a more effective method of removing more of the 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 excess of the bean. Some would say more effective. Some would say it's got its limitations and how how affects that, that not using the water process now. The mm. farmer doesn't have so many keys and tools in his toolkit to say, okay, I want to take it out now. Feeling the bean, it feels mm, feels smooth. Or it feels rough. I'm going to take it out now. Right. Whereas the machine has made that decision for you, and right or wrong. And then once it leaves the tank at whatever time they decide that mm-hmm. the 
it can leave the tank. Um, it then goes into channels. Yeah. Which is, as you say, channels. There's concrete channels usually again. Yeah. And they're literally channels like a, it's kind of like a maze of water. Yeah. It's like going on a hydro slide, whatever. <laughs> at, <laughs> on a big at, water slide. Yeah, exactly. And, and the water's going through, rushing through there. Mm. And the beans, because it moves the beans along right. that, that same direction. And you usually got, you've probably seen pictures of, of farmers and, and farm workers pushing like pedals, pushing the, the, the coffee beans backwards on the, mm. on the current of water. So they push the beans upstream of the water. Yep. And that agitates and that gets rid of any remnants of mucus mucus that's on the bean. So it's kind of that last stage of just cleaning out the bean, yep. making sure that it's Final, not yep. not going to be any part of it's you cleaned off. Yeah, <laughs> which is why wash processes, they talk about being a much more cleaner coffee. When you look at the green bean, it looks cleaner. Because it, it literally has been scrubbed it's, and cleaned. Been, and you've, <laughs> had a, you've had a good bath. Your and then mother, once, Your mother would be pleased. <laughs> and just those, do those channels, where do they... Does it actually, is that what moves the coffee onto the next yeah, step? it moves on, yeah. And so where, after it's gone through the, all those steps, all that processing, once the bean, once we've gotten a clean little seed, what is, where does the seed go after that? Or what's the next it step? It gets channeled and sometimes goes down a bit of a hill and the seeds, mm. and it gets diverted and the seeds go one way and the water goes another way. It can be filtered out. These are different ways. You're removing the water part so you get just the seeds that mm. basically I've seen go over sort of like a cliff. I mean, huh. that, that's exaggerated. Right. And it goes into a big barrel, a big bin, a wheelbarrow. Hmm. And that wheelbarrow then were full of these cherries that have gone through all this process. Well, no longer cherries now. Thank you, Reed. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so this bean, right. uh, they take them they're usually right on the drying pedo, which is just concrete, mm. large area of concrete, where they take the wheelbarrow and they dip it out. And, wow. and then uh, spread it to, to dry. Yep. And you got spreaders who probably day and night are doing this where they're turning the beans over. It's like another pedal going along and they just it just turns the beans over so the yeah. bottom ones are getting dry as much as the top ones are. Well, I think we had talked about it in the in the natural, the dry process, but making sure that it they get the beans or well, in the dry process the cherries. But in this case the beans are drying on all sides evenly mm -hmm. and you're not you know, because if you trap any water or mildew or anything like eventually you you could get mold. Or exactly. Like that. And you've all that work we've just talked about, <laughs> right. it's like, ouch, this is not a nice cup of coffee. Well, and it's it's interesting. So this part we get to, do they have raised beds for, for this kind of stuff They do, well? and that's becoming more popular and more common as such. It means it costs more money, but you can make these at bamboo and, and, and sheets that you that, that are, uh, you can get through mm. as such. And they, uh, so you take, not the wheelbarrow, you don't tip it out. Now you, you I don't know how you get it onto the raised <laughs> beds. Their positive is that you don't have to keep turning them as much because you're getting air coming from the bottom mm -hmm. and on the top. Right, instead of just being on the ground. Um, so that and that part is is very similar to any process. It's going to have a time to dry. Exactly, and now you're getting back. You've sort of come out away from dry process and honey process, and now you've come mm. into and wet process. Now you're coming back. They're coming all back together to get dried. Right, to get to a bean that can then be roasted. Yeah, to well get a bean that can go to the milling station. That's right. We don't want to forget milling. And then they're going to be shipped. Going to go through customs. <laughs> and the benefits of so once we've gone through all this process, the benefits of wet mill or not wet, I guess wet milling or mm -hmm. wet processing. Yes. What what are the, some of the highlights that as a farmer I might go? I'm I'm going to look for. You know, is it acidity or is it body or is there anything kind of that the wet process itself tends to bring out in a bean? As we were saying before, the cleanness. But acidity is, is, is one of them. Mm. And probably if I used a word, you know, the clarity of flavors, I've heard that being used before. Interesting. And it's just very distinct um, of that bean, and it's very obvious. This mm. has a, a, a very um, specific taste to it. Interesting. And it's consistent. Hmm. Whereas the natural process, you've got some things go on, it can make some beans good and some not, and it can be a little inconsistent if you're not really on top of things there. Right. Whereas the washed, because it's been so carefully washed all the way through, mm. you've got a lot of standardized, nice tasting beans, and they're all similar. You haven't got some still with some mucilage on and some with not. They're all clean. Therefore, when we cup them, they all taste fairly similar. It doesn't always happen that way, but mm. that, that's that's part of the advantage of a, a wet process coffee. 
Well, and you do have less like, you know, a large fruit around us, the same bean as, a, you know, like if you do natural process, you could have fruit that is different sizes around similar beans. And so when they're drying, that infusion process might be different. So you could, like you said, get mm-hmm. inconsistencies in the, the flavor. So, you know, this is, is, this is, like you said, complex clarity of vibrant flavor. It, I like that. That's well put. <laughs> and I'm not a farmer. I've been to two farms. I mean, it'd be more than two, two countries where they weren't in the processing parts. I just saw the channels. I saw the machinery. I didn't see any of it working. Mm. So, and I'm not a farmer. So I don't know. We need to get a farmer in here to say, hey, how's right. it work? Could you explain this? This doesn't make sense. And which way do you do it? Mm. Um, but as a coffee roaster, I, I need to know what process it's been through because mm. that'll change how I even roast the coffee. Wow. The profile is going to be different. The, the, the natural is going to probably be a little slower because it's a little softer. Mm. High elevation is going to be different to a lower elevation. So it's crazy that you know you as the consumer are going to potentially enjoy a wet versus a natural or different mm-hmm. process. But also if you're a roaster... That process is going to change how you roast the coffee. Exactly. You could ruin either one by roasting it the wrong way. And so it's important to know how the coffee is done, not just at a consumer level, but you as the roaster when you're ordering it. You know, okay, what am I going to want to order? That's right. And we we typically as a roaster get a sample, sometimes from the farm as Mm. it's being processed and before it gets shipped to us yeah um we get a, a sample a pre-shipment sharp sample they call it and yeah. we can put on our little roaster and to taste to say oh this is this is going to be good and usually you're going to taste it a little different when you actually get the final product because it's had longer to to rest which you right. need for coffee well and i guess the question i have is do you ever have blends that incorporate a wet with a natural process we coffee? do that's the, the and how do you i guess maybe oh. we're gonna another but there's challenges to roasting that then and it's important exactly. to know how all the coffees in your blend are, are, are processed. Exactly. And you will then move, you could move if you've got a, a small enough um, place where you can pre-blend coffee. You can roast mm. all the natural, you can roast all the wet, you can, oh, and then, then, then you put them together. It. That is its own challenges of getting the similar, you know, mm. best out of both coffees and then putting them together. And that is another episode on how do you blend coffees? Because some fight with each other and don't want to go together. Others yeah. say, yes, this is a great so, I mean, after this process, after it's gone through the wet process, it then goes to the mill to get the parchment. The dry off. mill. That's right. The dry mill, which is not the dry process, but the dry mill. Exactly. Not to be confused. Yeah. And that's a, another process that needs to be done correctly. Mm. Perhaps not as much as this as what we've already been talking about in the last weeks and months, but uh, mm. it, it, it's a longer – you need patience because you need to let the coffee rest because it's gone through a pretty – pretty intense. violent sort of thing yeah. um but yeah. but we move to that and that's another another episode in itself but that is in a you know a high level mm-hmm. what we're looking at for processing. it's probably a lower level than some have ever imagined what coffee was <laughs> <laughs> but or wanted uh, to so that's the wet process mm-hmm. that's one of the other processes that your coffee may have gone through before it gets to your cup mm-hmm. um we hope that uh You've learned something and maybe you're, maybe, you know what, maybe while you're in this episode, you looked at your bag of coffee and you said, oh, what am I drinking? And you're drinking wet process, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And uh, you may have decided that this is really boring. I don't want another episode on this, but uh, I doubt it. If you're into coffee as you're into Porsches, you'll need to, you'll say, I want to know how this runs and how it works. And this is really interesting. And you have become a nerd. If you're into Porsches. You'll be into processing. It's, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for getting to this point in the podcast. Um, don't forget to uh, sign up and get free updates on when the next episodes are coming out. Free links, to all that. Uh, you can sign up on our website, or if you go to your uh, podcasting application that you use, you can subscribe there as well. And that way, you don't even have to think about when the next episodes coming out. You get updates. We also have a new email sign up on our on our website, which is always a little scary when people see email sign up, but it is actually a good way to get cool updates and we won't spam you with boring stuff. But uh, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for being a part of Bean Stuff and, and, and making what we do possible. Have a good one.